are team number 13 and the topic of our project is map tracer. So, what we really are doing in this project is we are mapping, uh, we are mapping, uh, we are trying to plot a map in an unknown environment. The basic approach of our project is SLAM. It stands for simultaneous, uh, local, simul simultaneous localization and mapping. Uh, what is the basic motive of SLAM is for an autonomous robots like ours will go in an un unknown environment and will plot a map. Okay, we, we, as you can see the configuration of our project, we have implemented it by using a localized GPS. We have, uh, we can be, we can, we could have opted for a uh, higher end solution for a GPS, but the, there were two difficulties with the GPS. The first one was the, that it is expensive and the second one is that it, ha, it uh, the accuracy of the GPS is not as, as good uh, if we are talking in the terms of meters or even below the meters, in the centimeters. So, I am Arpit Malani and my teammate, he is Vivek Valinkar, he is Rahul Nihalani and he is Harmesh Gupta. Now, as you can see that, that the robot is moving and there is a separate algorithm that was assigned to it for its navigation that it does not obstruct with the field and with the objects. There are the it is continuously sensing the boundaries and as you can see on the second camera, it is, there is a camera mounted on the, on its head and it is continuously sensing the three ab over, overhead balls for its lo localization. And for that, we have applied the real time tra object tracking algorithm to track the three balls that are on the mount, uh, on the roof. Now, what we are really doing is we are having a distributed system, we have two computers over here. The first computer is recording the Zigbee values that is being transmitted by the robot and the second camera, the sec second PC is, rec having, uh, is recording the values of the centro centroids and the uh, positions of the position of the robot based on the localization. Now, this robot will continuously go and uh, continuously sense all the, through its sensors. There are five proximity sensors and five sharp sensors that are attached to this bot that continuously sense the values through the Zigbee module. And now, later on, I will demonstrate you how these Zigbee, Zigbee values and the camera values would be merged together. Now, you can see like the battery has started draining. So, it is probably the time we should switch off the bot. Now, switch off the bot. Now, as you can see that we have got two, two values. The first one is the camera.txt which we got from the overhead camera and from the PC1 and this other value is of the Zigbee module which is from the another PC and we have transferred the file together and now we will run an algorithm to combine the two files together. Now, this combined file will combine the both the files and one combined.txt would be created. Now, by combining the combined.txt, now we will we'll get the results. As you can see, we have got three or four images. The first image is what is the actual value of the sensor. And the sensor has plotted some values like this and applying some of the image, image processing algorithm, we have considerably drawn the map which is somewhat like this. It is not that much fascinating, but just because of the poor, poor values of the sensor, uh, we have considerably uh, drawn the map like this. Now, some of the difficulties that we faced during our project, the first difficulty that we faced was of the synchronization. The, as we can see, the image processing is already taking a lot of time to draw the map in the real time. So, that is why we shifted our project on a distributed system. The first system records the Zigbee values and the second system that captures the camera value. The other, some, some of the other difficulty that we faced was the sensors. The sensor were, I mean, they were gi giving the, really they, they were giving a very poor values. And secondly, it is not theoretic theoretically correct, but actually in the case of implementation, we found out that the sensors are color dependent. And the, because of the dependency of the color, we have, we faced a lot of problem. And finally, we come to a conclusion that the, it is comparatively good, it is accurate to the white color. 
Now, the one of the difficulty that we actually faced, uh, the another difficulty that we faced was the proximity sensor. No, nowhere there was the, any formula of the proximity sensor, neither it was mentioned in the Atomega, Atomega man, hardware or software manual. So, the, we plotted a graph over there and we found, found out the what is the actual distance, what is the ratio between the distance and the and the cap values, the voltage, voltage level. And finally, what was the biggest problem was the localization that we solved through a through our local GPS, as you can see on the over, over, overhead mount camera. And finally, we were really amazed by seeing this that if we are not giving the delay between the Zigbee, the values are coming. I mean, they are, they are, they, they are coming out out of the order, and the values of the sensor are not coming coming in a serial. So that was a problem that we faced, and we finally concluded that two characters generally generally they are not uh, disordered their self, and that's that they are, that's why we found out that the if we are sending the values by two bytes and giving a delay in between, then we can overcome the problem. Thank you. Thank you.